Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a different kind of knitting tutorial for you where I'm actually gonna be creating something that's doll sized. So this one was originally a request from my mom who collects Blythe dolls. And I'll put a picture of what they look like up here on the screen if you aren't familiar. But I'm guessing if you clicked on this familiar, you are familiar with that doll style. And essentially the scale of that doll is one to three. So that's the size that I'm knitting these hats for. And what I've done in this video is I've taken you on a tutorial through how I create one of these hats. So we start with just the base hat shape. So we're gonna work the cast on, join in the round, the ribbing, main portion, decreases, cast off. And then I'm gonna show you how I create these adorable little ears and then the bow as well. And finally, assemble it all together. So I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Down in the description box, you're gonna find the full written version of this pattern. That way you can follow along with the written version. And you're also gonna find each one of the video breakpoints. That way you can fast forward or rewind to any specific part of the video that you're looking for. If you're interested in seeing a different size doll hat too or a different style, please let me know in those comments down below. I'd be really curious to know if anyone out there is interested in knitting doll clothes with me. So let me know. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my future videos. Let's get started. First, starting off with the yarn I use for this project. So this is the main project yarn here, and this is one of my favorite yarns to use to make these little hats, just because I love how fuzzy and soft this yarn is. So this one is Buttercream Angel Hair, and on the Joann's website, it's listed under a couple different names, so I'll link to this exact one that I ordered down below. If you're looking for something comparable, this one is a bulky weight or number five yarn. Then for the insides of the ears, I just used some scrap yarn I have. So this is a fingering weight or a sock weight. Sometimes they're called different things. Yarn, and I just have a bunch of it. You really only need a few yards of it though to do the little tiny inside of each ear. Next up, I have two sets of knitting needles. So first, when using my bulky weight yarn, I do use the exact size recommended. So this one recommends a size US 10 and a half. So that is my first circular needle, knitting needle I have here. And I would recommend using a longer cord. So this one's probably about 32 inches or so. That way we can work magic loop. Then for my sock yarn or fingering weight yarn, here I have a US 2 knitting needle. And again, with a long cord, that way we can work magic loop. Then the last few things you need for this project are just a ruler, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. So once you've gathered all your supplies and all of all the ones I used, link down below, let's get on to the next step, which is the cast on. To start off, I'm gonna cast on a total of 32 stitches onto my larger knitting needle size. So here's my US 10 and a half. So the method I'm gonna be using for this hat is just a really simple method. It's called the backward loop cast on. The way this one works is first, we need to create a slip knot. So I'm gonna take a bit of yarn, only about eight inches or so, lay it over my left hand. So now I have the working yarn or the yarn attached to the ball further away from me and that little tail closest to me. Now I'm gonna grab onto that tail with my bottom three fingers, and I'm gonna take this working yarn, go up, back behind my pointer finger down to the bottom, towards myself up to the front again, back behind down to the bottom, towards myself up the front again, back behind down to the bottom. Grab onto that second strand with my bottom three fingers. So now it basically looks like I have two and a half loops on my pointer finger. And now to create my slip knot, I'm just gonna rearrange these loops. So first I'm gonna take the second loop, move it up over or towards the pointer, my, the point of my finger. <laughs> so it becomes the new first loop. Then I'm gonna take that new second loop and now I'm gonna pull that one up towards the point of my finger. And now I'm gonna take that newest second loop and slide that one off my finger. So now I have a slip knot and I'm gonna take either one of my knitting needle points and slide that slip knot right onto my knitting needle. Then I can just pull on that yarn tail and gently tighten it onto my knitting needle. Now when I hold my yarn for this cast on, the way I'm gonna hold it is knitting needle in my right hand and I just kind of grab right onto it. Then I'm gonna hold that slip knot in place with the pointer finger of my right hand. And then I like to hold the tail in my hand as well, just so I don't accidentally start casting on with it. So this slip knot does count as our first stitch. 
And now we're going to cast on a total of 32 stitches. So the way I'm going to cast on the next stitch is I'm going to take my left hand, put it behind the strand of yarn, grab onto that strand with my bottom three fingers, and now I'm going to move my pointer finger to go down below towards myself, up the front to the top, then back behind down to the bottom again, towards myself, up the front. So now I basically have one and a half loops around my pointer finger. And now I'm going to take the knitting needle, slide that loop off of my pointer finger, and onto the knitting needle. Right, so I'm just going to go right under that loop, and then gently tighten it onto my knitting needle. Now I lost those loops on my pointer finger, so now again I'm just going to go down to the bottom, towards myself, up the front to the top, back behind down to the bottom, towards myself, up the front to the top. Again, I have one and a half loops on my finger. Slide it off my finger onto my knitting needle. Gently tighten. And if I ever lose my place on my yarn, all I have to do is again, put my left hand behind the working yarn, grab onto it with my bottom three fingers, then just begin looping my finger towards myself up to the top, back behind down to the bottom, towards myself up to the front to the top. Then you can just begin Casting on again. So now I'm going to continue doing this until I have a total of 32 loops on this knitting needle. Now that I have those stitches on my knitting needle, the next step is I need to divide the stitches in half. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to grab on all my stitches and I'm going to slide them over to the cord of this knitting needle. Now I'm going to count in from either side to the halfway point. Once I find that halfway point, I'm just going to stretch out my stitches just a bit so I can see the cord, grab onto the cord, and then fold my work in half, and then begin sliding those two halves of the stitches up to the knitting needle points. Now when I look at my knitting needle points, the way I want to have it arranged is first I want to make sure my working yarn is coming out the knitting needle that's furthest away from me. So I essentially hold my two knitting needles like on a plane that's parallel to the table, so I have the two knitting needles held flat, one's further away from me, and one's closest to me. So I have the working yarn knitting needle furthest away, and then you can see my tail is on the one closest to me. And now I'm going to turn it so that all the purl bumps, or all the cast on bumps, sorry, <laughs> are going down towards the table. Okay, so that looks perfect. So just to go over that again, we have both knitting needle points going over towards the right, Working yarn is coming out my back knitting needle, or the one furthest away from me. And then all of my work is coming out down towards the table. So now to begin, the way Magic Loop has worked is first, we're going to work across the first half of our stitches. Then we're going to turn our work and work across the second half of our stitches. And then that makes up one full round. So in order to do one round, you have to do each knitting needle. The next thing to keep in mind is whether the first stitch you're working is a knit stitch or a purl stitch. For us, it's almost always going to be a knit stitch here, unless you don't have half and half. And in that case, the way you want your working yarn coming out is you want your working yarn coming up in between your two knitting needles, then we just want to drape it over that back knitting needle. So that'll set us up perfectly, and if you set up your yarn like that, then you won't end up with any extra yarn overs or anything like that at the beginning of each round. So now, how I actually work around is first I'm going to take my back knitting needle, or the one furthest away from me, and I'm going to grab onto that knitting needle point and pull on it so that those back stitches end up on the cord. Now you can see I still leave plenty of loop over here on the left hand side. Now I'm going to take that knitting needle and I'm going to go into the first stitch on my front knitting needle and I'm going to knit that stitch. 
Right, so to knit a stitch, we go into the stitch, the first stitch on the left knitting needle, into the base of it from the left to the right. Then we're going to wrap our yarn around. Let me just make sure I have my working yarn. We're going to wrap our yarn around, going first over towards the left, then in between the two knitting needles, pull it nice and snug, pull that loop through. Now this first round is a ribbing row, so we're going to be alternating between knitting and purling. So now to work a purl stitch next, I'm going to bring my working yarn in between my two knitting needles to the front of my work. And so to work a purl stitch, I'm going to go into the base of the next stitch from the right to the left. Then I'm going to wrap my yarn around going counterclockwise. So go up, then in between the two knitting needles, down to the bottom, pull it nice and snug, and then push that loop through, slide the stitch off your left knitting needle. So that was knit one, purl one. Now again, we need to knit one next. So whenever I knit one, I'm going to bring my work back in between my two knitting needles to the back of my work. I'm going to go into the base of the next stitch, going from left to right, wrap my yarn around. So first going back behind, then up in between the two knitting needles, pull it nice and snug, then pull that loop through, slide the stitch off your left knitting needle. Next up, we have a purl in between the two knitting needles to the front, go into the base of the next stitch on your left knitting needle, going from right to left, wrap your yarn around counterclockwise, then push that loop through, slide the stitch off. So now I'm going to continue working, knit one, purl one, all the way across this front knitting needle. Now I'm purling that final stitch on that first knitting needle, and now I'm just going to drop my other knitting needle point. So now what I want to do is I want to turn my knitting needle point so it's going over towards the right, and I'm going to thread back in that second knitting needle point. It always gets a little tight with that first stitch. Now to continue working that round, I now need to work across the second half of my stitches. So the next stitch in my ribbing pattern is a knit one, so I want to make sure I have my working yarn coming up in between the two knitting needles, then I'm going to drape it over my back knitting needle. And now I'm going to take that back knitting needle, pull it towards the right, so that those back stitches end up on the cord, and I still have plenty of loop over here on the left. And now I'm going to go into that first stitch, on this half of my stitches and knit it. Next up I have purl, bring my working yarn to the front, purl it. And then I'm just going to keep on alternating between knit one, purl one, all the way across this half of the stitches. Now that I finished going across this half, I'm just going to drop my second knitting needle again, the one without any stitches on it, turn my knitting needles over towards the right, thread back in my second knitting needle, and now all I need to do again is make sure I'm set up correctly. So I want to have my back knitting needle, the one with a working yarn coming out of it, my work coming down towards the table, and both of my knitting needle points going over towards the right. Now that we've knit across both knitting needles, we've now knit one full round. So next up, we're just going to repeat that exact same thing over and over again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue working that repeat ribbing round over and over again, where it's knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way across, over and over again until our total work is one inch. So we're going to measure from the bottom of that cast on up until the base of the knitting needle, and when that's one inch, I'll come back and show you the next step. Now that I finished that base ribbing, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to continue working round after round of just plain knitting. So knit a full round, then continue knitting round after round until the total work measures three inches. So I'm going to measure from the bottom of my work 
up until the base of the knitting needle. And when that's three inches, I'll come back and I'll show you those decreases up here at the top. Next up, I'm all ready for my decreases. So the way the decreases work is I'm gonna work a total of four decreases each round, two on the first side of my work, two on the back side of my work. And the way I work these is I work them all on the very edge. So you can see on the side of my hat, if I look at the side profile, I have two sets of decreases right there. Opposite side again, I have two sets of decreases. So first, I'm gonna work what's called a slip slip knit. That's a left leaning decrease. Then I'm gonna knit across this front knitting needle until two stitches remain. Work a knit two together. That's a right leaning decrease. Then turn my work and do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna do a slip slip knit, knit until two stitches remain, knit two together. So let me show you that decrease round right here. So again, just like I normally would, I'm gonna have my working yarn coming out up in between my two knitting needles, drape it over my back knitting needle. I'm gonna pull my back knitting needle so the back stitches end up on the cord. And now first up for a slip slip knit, how this works is I'm gonna slip my first stitch as if to knit. So just go right into the base of the stitch from the left to the right, pass it from one knitting needle to the other. Then I'm gonna go into my next stitch as if to knit. Again, pass it from one knitting needle to the other. Now I'm gonna pass both of those back over to my left knitting needle. So all I've done so far is I've twisted them. Now I'm gonna take my right knitting needle point and go into the back of both of those stitches. So I'm going from right to left behind my left knitting needle into both of them at one time. Then I'm gonna take my working yarn, come first behind, then all the way towards the left, up over the top, pull it snug in between the two knitting needles, and then pull that loop through, slide those two stitches off my left knitting needle. So now I turn those two stitches into just one. Now I'm gonna continue working across until two stitches remain. And before you do all this too, you wanna to make sure that you had half of your stitches on either knitting needle, or else it's not gonna end up being perfectly even on both sides. Now for a knit two together, I'm gonna to take my right knitting needle point into the base of the next two stitches going from left over towards the right. So just like how I'd normally work one stitch as a knit stitch, now I'm just going through both of them at the same time, wrapping my yarn around, pull through. So again, turn those two into just one. Now I'm gonna turn my work like I normally would for Magic Loop thread back in my second knitting needle. Again, make sure my working yarn is coming up in between my two knitting needles, draped over my back knitting needle. And now next up, I'm gonna work a slip slip knit again. So I'm gonna slip the first stitch as if to knit, slip the next stitch as if to knit, pass them both back over to my left knitting needle, put my right knitting needle into the back base of both of them Wrap my yarn around, so go underneath all the way towards the left, up above to the top, pull that loop through. Now I'm gonna continue knitting across until two stitches remain. And now for those last two stitches, I'm gonna work a knit two together. Now I'm gonna continue working that decrease round over and over again until I have eight stitches on either knitting needle or a total of 16 stitches. Now the way I work the bind off at the top of the hat is I use Kitchener stitch. So Kitchener stitch is something you'll see a lot of times at the toe of a sock. So what we're gonna do is basically seam these two sides together. The way I do this is first, I'm gonna cut my yarn. So I usually like to have too much yarn left over. I always err on the side of too much. So I'm gonna leave about two feet or 24 inches. And now I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle with that yarn tail. 
The way Kitchener stitch works is first there's a two stitch setup and then there's a four stitch repeat. So first starting with the setup, the way this works is I'm going to take my tapestry needle through the first stitch on my front knitting needle as if to purl and I just pull the yarn through. Don't slide that stitch off the front knitting needle though. Now I'm going to go underneath that front knitting needle to the first stitch on my back knitting needle as if to knit. So I'm going to slide my tapestry needle knitwise through that first stitch and again leave that stitch on the knitting needle. Now I'm ready for the four stitch repeat. So first up, I take my tapestry needle through the first stitch on my front knitting needle knitwise, slide that stitch off my front knitting needle. Now I go into the new first stitch on my front knitting needle purlwise, leave that stitch on my front knitting needle. Now I'm going to go into the first stitch on my back knitting needle purlwise, slide that stitch off my back knitting needle, and I'm going to go into the new first stitch on my back knitting needle knitwise, leave that stitch on my back knitting needle. So that's the four stitch repeat. So let me show it one more time and then I'll just put it up on the screen. Go through the first stitch on my front knitting needle knitwise, slide that stitch off my front knitting needle, go through the new first stitch on my front knitting needle as if to purl, leave that stitch on the front knitting needle. Go through the first stitch on my back knitting needle purlwise, slide that stitch off the back knitting needle. Now go into that new first stitch on the back knitting needle knitwise, leave that stitch on the back knitting needle. So now I'm going to continue working across the rest of these stitches. And once I get close to the end, basically I just continue doing as many stitches of that repeat as I can until I've cast off all of them. Now I finished going all the way across that top edge. So I'm just going to find somewhere right next to where the yarn is to thread that yarn tail into the inside of my hat. I'm going to take off my tapestry needle. And then for the last step, I'll show you how I weave in all of those ends. But for now, we're all done with the hat portion. Next up is we're going to make the little ears. So first I'm going to start with the outer portion of the ear. So to do that, again, I'm going to be using my larger knitting needle size and my white yarn. So again, I'm going to start with the slip knot. Slide it onto my knitting needle. And here I'm going to cast on a total of 12 stitches. Now that I have those 12 stitches cast on, I'm going to slide all of them over to my cord and divide them in half for magic loop. And when I have them divided, I want to make sure it's set up the same way as I did for the regular hat. So I have my working yarn coming out the knitting needle furthest away from me all the cast on bumps going down towards the table and both my knitting needle points going over towards the right. Now to start this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work two full rounds just knitting. So I'm going to knit across front, back, front, back. And again, when you start, make sure your working yarn is coming up in between your two knitting needles draped over that back knitting needle. Now that I've worked those two rounds, I'm going to work one round where I just repeat knit two together all the way across. So I'm going to go from six stitches on each knitting needle down to three stitches. And again, the knit two together is where I go into the base of the next two stitches from left to right and knit them together. When I finish this round, I'm going to set it up like I usually would for magic loop. 
But here I'm just going to cut my yarn. And I don't leave quite as long of a tail here, so probably only about 8 inches or so. Thread my tapestry needle. And now I'm going to slide each stitch off my knitting needle and onto the tapestry needle. So I start on my front knitting needle here. Slide each stitch off right onto the tapestry needle. Then I'm going to pull on that back knitting needle so that the stitches end up on the opposite knitting needle point. Flip it around. And now I'm going to begin threading each one of those stitches onto my tapestry needle. So I basically just went all the way around that little circle and put each stitch onto that waist or that tail yarn. And now how I close up that center portion is first I'm just going to pull it nice and tight and then I'm just going to tie a small knot. So the nice thing is, is the next color yarn will end up covering up this knot so you don't have to worry about it being seen. And now I'm just going to weave a little bit of that yarn tail just through those center stitches again. Perfect. So now I'm going to cut that yarn. I'm going to leave this other yarn tail on here though so that I can seam it onto the rest of the hat using this yarn tail. Set that one to the side. Now I need my second yarn. Now next up for the center of the ear, I'm going to work the center of the ear the exact same way as I did the outer portion of the ear. So I'm going to cast on a total of 12 stitches, join in the round for magic loop, work two rounds just knitting, and then work one round working a knit two together all the way across, then cast off each one of those stitches by just threading the tapestry needle and the tail through all the remaining stitches on the knitting needles. Then I'm going to repeat this process, all both one, the outer one and the inner one, one more time for the second ear. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how to assemble it all together. Now I have all my pieces here for the ears. And one thing I wanted to mention is on these inner ear pieces, the way that I close up that center portion is now I'm going to tie the knot on the back of it. So kind of on the pearl bump side. That way when I assemble the two pieces together, it's kind of like the knot from this front piece is on the back and then the knot from this back piece is on the front. So then it's kind of like the two knots are just right on top of each other and they're nice and hidden. So first let me secure this one real quick. Thread the yarn to the back. Tie a small knot. And just weave in the end just a few times. Nothing fancy here. Now I'm going to cut that tail. So now when I look at my four pieces, each one of them has one tail remaining, which is kind of like the one from when I cast on. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to seam each one of these pink pieces inside one of the white pieces. So to do that, I'm just going to thread my tapestry needle with the pink tail. And then I try and keep this as hidden as possible, the actual seaming. So first, I'm just going to go down within the pink and try and grab one of those center stitches from the white. And I'm just going to keep on going up, go down again, and try and grab the next center stitch from the white. So just roughly sewing it on there, trying to keep the pink relatively hidden if I look at the back of my ear. Now that I've seen that in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot kind of like 
right in that edge between the top pink and where the white meet up. Grab onto one of those strands. And I'm gonna thread that yarn just back behind the pink. And then I just cut it. So now the inner ear is attached to the outer ear. And now next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seam this ear onto the hat. So to do that, I pick right at the edge where it kind of turns into that diagonal, I place it right before that edge. So basically I'd have one here and then the next one right there. So fairly close together. So now I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle with this white yarn tail. I'm gonna pick a location. So usually I pick going right to the left of where those decreases are. Now I'm just gonna go back and forth, kind of try and estimate going over one a stitch, one stitch, then pick up a small portion of the base of that ear. Go back down into the hat. And I just go across for a few stitches. securing that ear in place. And now if you want to, again, you can keep on securing it a little bit further on either edge. It really just depends whatever look you wanna go for. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on and work on my second ear, attaching first the two pieces together and then onto the hat. Now how I weave in all my ends is first, I'm just gonna turn the hat inside out. Let's start with this bottom one down here with the cast on edge. So for this one, what I like to do is first, I'm gonna go to the next stitch over to kind of, you can see how there's a bit of like a step that forms. So I go to the next stitch over, bring it through there, and then I'm just gonna go up one of the columns of knit stitches. Kind of squeeze it a bit to relax it so it isn't so tight. Then I'm just gonna cut that yarn. Now for these are the ones up here at the top. I do like to tie knots for all my knitting. <laughs> I know it's not the most popular thing to do, but I will tie a small knot. So first let me thread my tapestry needle first. So first I'm gonna find a strand that looks a little bit hidden. So let's say this one right here. Just tie a knot first. It's a bit too long. And now I'm just gonna weave this in. So I either follow along with a different stitch or another good place to weave it in is along this column of decreases because this will be completely hidden. And I just tug on it a bit to make sure it isn't too tight. And then just cut the yarn. So now I'm gonna continue weaving in the rest of these tails that I have. Now the last thing you can add if you'd like to is the cute little bow down here in the bottom corner. So the way I created that bow was first I knit a long I-cord. So to knit an I-cord, first I'm gonna cast on three stitches using my sock weight yarn onto my smallest knitting needle size. Now the way an I-cord works is each time you're gonna be knitting every row going from the right over towards the left and you never turn your work around. So let me show you what I mean here. So first I just cast on those three stitches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab onto the three stitches, 
then slide them all the way over to my opposite knitting needle point. Now I'm going to knit those three stitches. And it'll seem a bit strange at first when you begin working with your working yarn because your working yarn is really coming out over here on the left hand side and you're pulling it all the way over to the right. That's exactly what you want to be doing. I'm going to knit the three. Then again, I'm gonna grab one of the three stitches, slide them all the way over to my opposite knitting needle point. Again, knit the three. And here you can see it a little bit clearer how the working yarn is coming out all the way over there on the left. And you're pulling it all the way over to the right to knit that first stitch. So now I'm gonna continue working this row of knit three, slide it over to the other knitting needle point, knit three again, over and over again, for the length that I'll put up here in the corner of the screen. Now on the last row, when you're done, the way to cast this off is first to knit the first stitch, knit the second stitch, and now over here on your right knitting needle, you wanna use your left knitting needle point to pass that first stitch up, over, and off that second stitch. Now you're gonna knit the next stitch, pass the previous stitch up, over, and off, and now you just wanna tug on that one last remaining stitch so it becomes a little loop. Cut your yarn. So here I'm probably gonna leave about 10 inches or so, and thread that yarn tail through that remaining loop. Perfect. Next up, I'm gonna tie a bow. So this can always be a little bit tricky, <laughs> but I just kind of try my best here. And then I can always rearrange it once it's tied. So that looks good. Now what I'm gonna start by doing is just taking one of these ends and weaving it right into the small tube that the I cord creates. So basically what you're doing with I-cord is you're creating like a circle of stitches. So first I'm just gonna take this one side and you just gotta find the center. So now I just weave that right into the center. And then cut my yarn on that side. Now I'm gonna use the other yarn tail And first, once again, I'm gonna weave it up the center. Just about to the center point of the bow. So now I'm gonna seam the bow to the hat. I like to do it kind of in a bottom corner. And I'm just gonna seam it in a few different places. So I'll probably seam down one of the two sides, then either side of the bow just to keep the bow from actually unraveling at all as well. So there's no real science here, just kind of trying to keep the bow in the shape it originally was while attaching as many points as I can. Once I'm all done attaching the bow to the hat, I'm just gonna thread my pink yarn to the inside, then tie a knot and lightly weave in that end. I hope you've enjoyed knitting this adorable little doll hat with me. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button, that way you stay up to date on all my future videos. Also, as I mentioned in the intro, if you're interested in seeing any other doll hat styles or doll hat sizes for different specific types of dolls, please let me know in those comments down below. I'd be really curious to know what kind of the most in-demand doll knitwear is right now so I can help create more video tutorials for you. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.